if you were to put in place market mechanisms that would help consumers put in distributed resources in appropriate locations, that these prices could be, could be normalized and you could optimize the system and lower costs overall. And so if you have this kind of data and you understand it and know about it, you can help target investments and target and then decide how to target those investments. You know, we, we do have these, these, these conflicting jurisdictions between FERC and state regulators and you know, traditional FERC uh, regulatory purview is the <clears throat> generation and, and transmission at the bulk power level and wholesale power and of course uh, the retail level is primarily the purview of the states. Uh, with the distribution system and uh, customers uh, within that distribution system. We do have to, again, as I mentioned, figure out how to coordinate and collaborate between the two because now that we have distributed resources that are being put in at the consumer level, I believe that those resources should not be isolated behind that meter simply for the use by consumers, but consumers should have the opportunity if they want to, to use those resources for larger grid support, for things like voltage and bar support at a local level, and reduction of congestion at the distribution level, and if, ne if possible, things like uh, <clears throat> ancillary services at the wholesale level, and energy and capacity services at the wholesale level. Of course, we have a little case pending before the U.S. Supreme Court on Order for, uh, 745 that may decide um, how that jurisdiction goes, but I hope that FERC's jurisdiction there is not taken away in that I hope that it doesn't restrict consumers using their resources to reduce the cost of the investments in those resources by using them for multiple purposes. I um, wrote a paper with a, a friend of mine who's also a client uh, with a group called Clean Power Finance, James Tong. He's a vice president of policy there, great guy, very smart guy. Um, and the paper we wrote was on grid neutrality. In fact, it's in the October issue of the Public Utilities Fortnightly. And we, we outlined in that paper uh, five different principles. And the principles we outlined were empowering the consumer, demarcating the commons, aligning risk and rewards, creating a transparent level playing field, and fostering open access. And so with these five principles, the first one, empowering the consumer, really is about helping consumers with respect to the grid ensure that they have choices, have choices not only with uh, their distribution utility, but also choices with third parties who can provide them services like um, distributed generation, efficiency, demand response, uh, controls, uh, and other things. Uh, and other software that can help them operate their systems within their facilities in ways, but also have choices about how they can hopefully, as I already talked about, use those assets not only internally, but use them if they have other functions to lower their overall costs. And not only lower all of the, their overall costs, but here's the most important point. Here's the takeaway, hopefully, for today. And that is lower the costs of all the people who use the grid because what they're doing is they're investing in a solar system. They're investing in an electric car. But if they can also use it out for the grid, it's an investment that they've made instead of the distribution utility, which then goes into everybody's rates, that can support the grid in some way. So you have choices. You have choices when you modernize the grid. Those choices can be on the utility side of the meter, or those choices can be on the consumer side of the meter. And depending upon how you set up that structure of the grid, you'll optimize those investments. So demarcating the commons is just looking at, you know, what is the common area, and I think the common area is the distribution grid, and that is the platform. The platform they're talking about in New York in the REV process, um, <clears throat> distribution uh, resource platform ultimately, that they're going to have the distribution utility run. But ultimately we need to demarcate what those commons are and how to how to operate on those commons. And then also aligning risks and rewards. And this again comes back to who's going to make the investments. Who do you want to have make the make the risk in these investments? I know, you know, a lot of utilities in this country have invested in smart meter. Another, I think a better example perhaps is voltage control. You can control voltage a couple of ways. One way is you can have uh, utilities invest in um, boxes they can put on their distribution transformers on all the poles in their circuits, or 
You can have voltage control in selected uh, distributed PV systems that ultimately are uh, put in by consumers on their own. So you can have consumers invest, in essence, in uh, technology that can provide for voltage control, or you can have the utility distribution system invest in it. Who do you want to have invested in? What's the cheapest way to do it? What's the best, most effective, most efficient way for uh, consumers uh, to uh, realize the benefits of voltage control overall? So aligning risk and rewards. And then creating a transparent level playing field. Hopefully these things should be open and, and transparent, what, what all the costs are, uh, those uh, charts that I showed you and those those maps that I showed you that are being done in California by, by Providing the transparency of, of what the real costs are down at the circuit level can really provide for um, entrepreneurs and consumers and third parties for where are the appropriate investments. Where do we want to make these investments? How can we make them? How can we make the system work better? Uh, if we can see where uh, the costs are, but we also have to have market mechanisms in place to value those costs and to reward people if they do make those investments. You can't, obviously people are not going to make the investments unless there's some, some way to, to, to value it. But they're doing the investment and you sum those up in ways that ultimately result in where you want to go.